R2D2, AI robot chef, imitates human eating process to create tastier food. Cambridge scientists say that a robot is capable of tasting and checking whether balance of flavors is right. The culinary robots are here, not only to distinguish between food which tastes good and which doesn't, but also to become better cooks. A robot chef designed by researchers at Cambridge University has been trained to taste a dish's saltiness and the myriad of ingredients at different stages of chewing, a process imitating that of humans. It's a step above current electronic testing that only provides a snapshot shot of a food saltiness. Replicating the human process, researchers say, should result in a tastier end product. If robots are to be used for certain aspects of food preparation, it's important that they're able to artificially taste what they're cooking. The concept of tasting as you go, checking whether the balance of flavors is right in a dish's cooking process, is a critical approach, according to researchers, as the human perception of taste relies on saliva produced during chewing and digestive enzymes to decide whether food is enjoyable or not. To map human taste, the researchers train the robot chef to make omelets. It then tasted nine variations of scrambled eggs and tomatoes at three stages of the chewing process. A saltiness sensor attached to the robot's arm provided readings as the robot prepared dishes. To imitate the chewing progress, the team blended the egg mixture and had the robot test the dish again. They say the R2D2 AI robot can do much more than just say whether a dish is too salty or not. For example, it is also capable of deciding whether more mixing is needed or other ingredients. In the end, it's just a single sensor which wouldn't be able to do two different ingredients normally, but thanks to chewing, they're able able to monitor all different changes throughout the mechanical processing. The robotic arms looked similar to those in a car factory, but were made smaller and more affordable to be used in a variety of kitchens, such as a chain restaurants. Looking ahead, the researchers hope to teach the robot to adapt to an individual's tastes, such as preferring sweet or oily food, and become an essential part of household food preparation. The researchers believe the technology will play a major role in homes in the future. This progress represents a leap forward in robotic cooking, and by using machine and deep learning algorithms, masticate will help robot chefs adjust taste for different dishes and users. Nanomagnet computing can provide low-energy artificial intelligence. Researchers have shown it possible to power artificial intelligence using tiny nanomagnets that interact like neurons in the brain. This new method, developed by a team led by Imperial College London researchers, could slash the energy costs of artificial intelligence, which is currently doubling globally every 3.5 months. In a paper published recently in Nature Nanotechnology, the international team produced the first proof that networks of nanomagnets can be used to perform AI-like processing. The researchers showed nanomagnets can be used for time series prediction tasks, such as predicting and regulating insulin levels in diabetic patients. Artificial intelligence that uses neural networks aims to replicate the way that parts of the brain work, where neurons talk to each other to process and retain information. A lot of the math used to power neural networks was originally invented by physicists to describe the way that magnets interact, but at the time, it was too difficult to use magnets directly as researchers didn't know how to put data in and get information out. Now, a team of researchers has been able to use magnets themselves to produce and store data, cutting out the middleman of software simulation and silicon hardware and potentially offering enormous energy savings. Nanomagnets can come in various states, depending on their direction. Applying a magnetic field to a network of nanomagnets changes the state of magnets based on the properties of the input field, but also on the states of surrounding magnets. The researchers were then able to design a technique to count the number of magnets in each state once the field has passed through. As researchers have proven that it can be done, it paves the way for getting rid of the computer software that does the energy-intensive simulation. Watching how the magnets interact gives all the information that's needed, and the laws of physics themselves become the computer. Much of the energy used to achieve AI in conventional silicon chip-based computers is wasted in inefficient transport of electrons during processing and memory storage. Nanomagnets, however, don't rely on the physical transport of particles like electrons, but instead process and transfer information in the form of magnon waves, where each magnet affects the state of neighboring magnets. This means much less energy is lost, and the processing and storage of information can be done together rather than being separate processes as in conventional computing. This innovation could make nanomagnets computing up to 100,000 times more efficient than conventional computing. The research team will next teach the system using real-world data such as ECG signals and hope to develop a real computing device. Eventually, magnetic systems could be integrated into conventional computers to improve energy efficiency for intense processing tasks. Their energy efficiency also means they could feasibly be powered by renewable energy and used to do AI at the edge, which is the processing of data where it is being collected, such as weather stations in Antarctica, rather than sending it back to large data centers. It also means they could be used on wearable devices to process biometric data on the body, such as predicting and regulating insulin levels for diabetic people or detecting abnormal heartbeats. New studies suggest how to use artificial intelligence to predict bone fractures in cancer patients. 
As medicine continues to embrace machine learning, a new study suggests how scientists may use artificial intelligence to predict how cancer may affect the probability of fractures along the spinal column. In the U.S., more than 1.6 million cases of cancer are diagnosed every year, and about 10% of those patients experience spinal metastasis, which is when the disease spreads from other places in the body to the spine. One of the biggest clinical concerns that patients face is the risk that spinal fractures due to these tumors can lead to severe pain and spinal instability. A spinal fracture increases the risk of patient death by about 15%. By predicting the outcome of these fractures, the research offers medical experts the opportunity to design better treatment strategies and help patients make better informed decisions. While many of the changes the body undergoes when exposed to cancerous lesions are still a mystery, with the power of computational modeling, scientists can get a better idea of what's happening to the spine. Their study, published in the International Journal of Numerical Methods in Biomedical Engineering, describes how the researchers trained an AI-assisted framework called called ReconGAN to create a digital twin or a virtual reconstruction of the patient's vertebrae. Unlike 3D printing, where the virtual model is turned into a physical object, the concept of a digital twin involves building a computer simulation of its real-life counterpart without creating it physically. Such a simulation can be used to predict an object or system's failure performance. In this case, how much stress the vertebrae can take before cracking under pressure. By training ReconGAN on MRI and micro-CT images obtained by taking slice-by-slice -slice pictures of vertebrae acquired from a cadaver, researchers were able to generate realistic microstructural models of the spine. Using their simulation, the researchers were able to virtually enlarge the model, a capability, the study says, which is imperative to understanding and incorporating changes into the entirety of the vertebrae's geometric shape. What's outstanding about the work is how detailed they were able to model the geometry of the vertebrae. They were even able to virtually evolve the same bones from one stage to another. Researchers used CT and MRI scans from a 51-year-old female lung cancer patient whose cancer had spread to simulate what might happen if cancer weakened some of the vertebrae and how that would affect how much stress the bones could take before fracturing. The model predicted how much strength parts of the vertebrae would lose as a result of the tumors, as well as other changes that could be expected as the cancer progressed. Some of their predictions were confirmed by clinical observations in cancer patients. For a field like orthopedics, using a non-invasive tool like the digital twin can help surgeons understand new therapies therapies, simulate different surgical scenarios, and envision how the bone will change over time, either due to bone weakness or due to the effect of radiation. The digital twin can also be modified to patient-specific needs. The ultimate goal is to develop a digital twin of everything a surgeon may operate on. Right now, they're only used for very, very challenging surgeries, but researchers want to help run those simulations and tune those parameters even more.